The AdCorp Employment Index fell at an annualised rate of 0.23% in August. This followed stalled employment numbers in July, a 2% decline in June and a 3.1% decline in May. For more, labour lawyer Michael Bagram joins us from Cape Town. Michael, news flow is not getting any better, is it, on the labour front in South Africa? It certainly isn't. Unfortunately, we are now starting to think that we're going to get some sort of jobs recession which is six months in a row. We finished our fourth month and we've had a, a decline again. So it's not good news all round. The report's interesting because the report takes us and has a look where the job losses are. And we see that it's in the formal sector which shed about 14 and a half thousand jobs. But we also see that the informal sector and the sector which employs labor broking um, firms, that's grown again which is interesting. So if you're looking at service sector, it's gained 14,000 jobs and the primary sectors, primary and secondary sectors such as mining, manufacturing and construction, they, they've shed 16,000 jobs. So we've got a problem. We do have a problem and that's not going to alleviate the heated undercurrent that we're feeling in the, the labour environment right now. Obviously I'm now referring to the strikes and we see more coming through on the goldfields front with some 10,000, 15,000 workers going on strike. Yeah, so uh, we've got this new uh, development plan that uh, Manuel's been putting together and that on Friday I was given the green light which I think is at least a, a step in the right direction in that they're trying to focus on, on the, the dimensions of the labour market which they can potentially imp influence positively. But you know, my, my biggest fear with uh, the labour market in this country is, is South Africa behaves almost like a first world country um, in the way that it mechanises, yet we're a third world country with a huge abundance of labour. Uh, and there's, there's, th there's a structural disconnect uh, mm -hmm. within this economy which um, has been around for a long, long time, I'd have to say. You know, you look at it since for the past two decades at least, uh, South Africa's behaved in this way. And I think we need to structurally look at what is holding back um, this, this need uh, to constantly go towards uh, opt for mechanization as opposed to going for for uh, the, the, the more labor intensive. Now we can all speculate on the labor policies and all of that, but there's actually something else that's, that's potentially wrong there. And uh, it's, it's the way that this, this economy um, operates mm -hmm. with regard to raising capital and, and its choice in, in, in how to improve efficiencies, which I think is at the core of it. Michael, let's just focus on that positive number. The services sector, you said added 14,000 jobs. Am I correct on, on that stat? Yes, absolutely correct. So at least on that se in that sector, the 14,000 jobs is a positive. Uh, but we need to have a look at, at what actually is going wrong because when you look at the World Economic Forum's Global Competitors Report, which is the, the report that takes us to and compares us to the rest of the world, we've got real problems over here. The labor employer conflict, and this is before the Marikani disaster, we the absolute worst in the world in terms of that, that sector. The hiring and firing practices, we the second worst in the world. Wage flexibility, the fifth worst in the world. And pay and productivity link linkages, it's the 11th worst in the world. So we've got a real problem. Um, it, you know, it almost feels as if we Alice through the looking glass where you have to keep running just to stay where you are, but in fact we've stopped running. If, if you could make, down, Michael, we, if you could make one... Right down that, that forum. If you could make one sweeping change right now, what would that be on the labor front? Well, just quite one simply thing what initiate. I would do is I would look at small businesses and give them uh, exemptions from most of our labor laws. If you're employing less than 10 people, give them exemptions with regard to hiring and firing. Let's not make the labor laws act as a handbrake to our system. We, we've got problems in South Africa and the whole world is relaxing their labor laws and we are trying to make it worse. In fact, we, we saw what happened at Nedlac today, uh, where immediately Kosatu is having a fight about the youth wage subsidy and they said they've agreed to nothing. So our minister says there seems to be an agreement on the ground and Kosatu says no. Um, I, mean, I actually think what we're trying to do is trying to destroy the economy through our labor laws and we need to have a look 
at that sweeping change immediately. All right, so, so Michael there is going to make small businesses exempt from, from labor regulation. What are you going to do, Mr. Guinos? Well, small, small business is honestly where growth's at, it's where employment's at, it's where most of it's at. Um, and yet small business gets lumbered with the same regulations in many instances as large business. Um, so things like BE and affirmative action and employment equity, all of these sorts of things take time. Um, and they take a huge amount of effort to get right. So I, I, would, I, I would go one step further and say, uh, aside from just exempt from some of the labor laws, I'd like to reform the whole structure of doing business as a small business. Um, not to mention that... Just remove all the red tape. For sure, remove the red tape. And, and I think have a look again. Um, as, as Michael pointed out, in fact, I, I'd seen the previous uh, competitiveness report. I didn't think it was possible to get worse, but from the numbers he's just quoted now, we actually have slipped down. So, you know, we were just about lost. Now we pretty much are lost, and, and that's just not good enough. Well, we, we're building a con uh, convincing case here. Let's get your voices into the mix, Bridget. Yeah, I think that there's, you know, it's, it's a big concern that in an, in an economy where we've got so we run such a high unemployment level that you've got the likes of what's happening in the mining industry. And it's, and it's continuing. This is, this is our third week that we're having these discussions and we're talking about it. In an environment where people should be grateful for the jobs that they have and pursuing productivity rather than uh, encompassing other people who want to do a job. It's, it's all of the negative stuff is, is coming through and it's impacting us not just from our own labor force but also from a global perspective in terms of how they view us and how they're viewing and the political the negative and the negative. feeds yeah. through into the international arena. Correct. Just over the Lanman uh, debacle in February, that was when all the international channels and, and our affiliates were taking hits mm. from the South African bureaus into the US, into Europe. It was mm. all on the negative And if you look and at, I mean, say, we've just had China's results come out. They're important are slowing down. The European imports have slowed down. So our export sector and certainly the manufacturing in South Africa has to come to the party to try to accommodate what's happening globally. And these kind of things certainly are not going to are not going to pose any upside on that. We're going to take it one step further. You've just been made Labour Minister in <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> All right, what's your, what's your first move? My first move would be to uh, to allow small businesses to hire and fire because they require the flexibility, especially when it comes to, to profitability. But I would still keep certain of the labor laws for the larger corporates. Um, I think that in terms of uh, wage flexibility, there needs to be a bit more of that. Um, we see how it works in the US in terms of, of employment and how it keeps that, that employment level relatively, relatively high. Um, and then just with respect to, I'd actually put a bit more pressure on the education minister because the jobs are in the services sector and you know we've, we've had a new democracy for 18 years. So the matriculants we see now were, were born in 1994. And uh, you know, how many of them are actually going to feed through to the formal sector because we've had, in my view, two changes to the education system in their lifetimes. Michael, any chance that we're going to see these stats improving in the current environment in the near term? Uh, I think we could see them improving. i tell you what's interesting, and it's, it's something that makes me laugh, in that we've had this big push by Kassar to, to try and ban labor brokers mm -hmm. and, and to stop using agency temps. So what are they? But the pattern over here that we're seeing from this report from Adcor is that there's been an increase in the use of agency temps that's almost 1.3 percent increase and it seems to be a broader pattern of improving on outsourcing labor because they want to shift the risk to the third party so we, we're seeing business now starting to adapt itself and saying all right these are the labor laws how do we get around them how do we adapt to it and they they've they've all come up with the answers so i think what we're going to do as as we've now won the race to the bottom as it were, we're right at the bottom of the global index. Maybe businesses need to react and they need to be more innovative and to see that the government's not helping them. They're going to have to help themselves.